Hello, everybody. So good to have you here. We're going to be beginning a new build series. We're going to be making one of these awesome little trays. This is a great first project to work on your coils. And it's a really cool place. You'd be able to put your keys in here or whatever you want. You put it on top of your dresser. So a cool little functional item. Won't take you very long to make, but it'll give you a lot of practice using some coils. One of the things that's really helped me over the years making coils is getting it mostly round and getting it really coil of shape before we even put it on the table. I find that if people can get it really nice around before they put it on the table, it really helps you avoid those flat spots that you can sometimes get when you're learning how to make coils. Keep it round and then put it on the table. We're not trying to put a whole lot of pressure on here, just enough to get it thinned out a little bit. And you can see I like to flip a lot and we're going for the thickness of a pencil. So roll it, flip it. You really just gotta concentrate. I like to stand up when I'm doing this. I know it seems a little silly, but I feel like standing up really gives you that athletic motion that you need to have for making these coils. Don't be afraid to stand up. And you're gonna wanna find a pencil. We're gonna use that as a measurement tool. A uh, pencil somewhere between a three quarter inch, or I'm sorry, a three quarters of a pencil or a full pencil or a ball pen, pen is a great size. If you keep them all your coils the same length and the same thickness, your tray is going to be the same height throughout and it'll really help you out. So um, consistent thickness of a pencil, consistent length of a pencil or a ballpoint pen. A motif is a reoccurring design or element in an artwork. We're going to pick a coil motif that you want to repeat to make your tray. I recommend you trying out several different motifs before deciding on one to repeat for your tray design. Make enough motifs to completely go around your slab base. Again, keep in mind that you're going to use a pencil to give you a standard length and width of your coils. Once you get all those coil motifs rolled out, it's time to start attaching them. It's really amazing the different varieties you can get just by changing the layout. I'm going to go with the front to front, back to back layout. Now you can see me scoring and slipping here. I'm using my needle tool to score it and then I'm adding water and then scoring it again. That creates a slip. You could easily just use slip as well, but I'm, I like to use the, the score and use water to create slip method. It works really well for me. So I'm going to do that. And then you see me using my paintbrush to get in between the cracks and just smooth all the slip up and get it looking really neat. Um, just you taking a little time for your craftsmanship always, always, always makes a better piece. You just go all the way around and attach them all. And you can see me again using that paintbrush to get them all nice and cleaned up. Then we're going to make one final coil. This one is going to be a little thicker. We're going for the thickness of our finger. And once it gets about the thickness of our finger, we're going to flatten it out using our hand. And if you want, you can use your bisque stamp to decorate it. It's a pretty cool idea. Um, and then we're going to score it and slip it and attach it. So this is what we call a stretcher row. Um, oftentimes the uh, motifs uh, um, going vertical, we call that a sailor row. And this is going to be the stretcher row, which is going to lock it all together. So using the um, serrated rib to score, adding the water, scoring again, create slip. I'm going to do the same thing to the coil motifs. And then I'm going to add this stretcher row on here. It's going to attach it all together and keep it together. If your stretcher row doesn't all, you know, if the coil is not long enough or once you go all the way around, it's very easy to attach two coils. You cut it a diagonal over an overlapping coil and then you score it and slip it and put it together. That diagonal creates a lot of surface area and it makes a very strong joint. And then you just blend it together and you'll never know it was two coils or, you know, you never know that's where it was joined. Now, once you get that stretcher row put on, you do have the option to put on another sailor row of motifs and then another stretcher, and you can continue with that on as high as you would like to. But I'm gonna set mine aside and let it get leather hard. And then I'm gonna take my Sureform tool, and I am I like to make a bevel pass. Um, this bevel, I'm holding it at a 45 degree angle. I'm gonna go around one time. This is gonna do two things. One, it's gonna keep the edge from chipping. And two, it's gonna create a slight shadow underneath our pot and make it look really good. And um, I always take the time for craftsmanship. You can see I accidentally set mine down on a little darker stoneware clay 
And uh, just take the time to remove that and get it all nice and smooth. It's gonna make a product that you're really proud of and that you're gonna cherish for a long time. Again, that paintbrush gets in those cracks really good. And we're gonna set them aside to dry. We're gonna fire them. And I will see you in part two where we're going to do an underglaze and glaze technique. Hopefully you have a great day. I'll see you in part two.